Welcome to my channel guys, my name is James. Today I'm going to be showing you guys on how to fillet a salmon. Now this is actually one of my videos that I'm doing as well for my online cookery course. So if you are interested in learning more on how to cook, cooking techniques and also some tricks that you may not know about, then be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and like the video and stay tuned for when my online cookery course comes out. And as you can see today we have this beautiful salmon. It's five kilos, so that's about 10 pounds. This is a big salmon today, so I'm gonna show you how to fillet it, super easy and quick, and also a few tips on preparation as well. So, let's get started. Now, there are many different types of fish, and not all types have the same anatomy. Salmon is one of the easier ones to fillet. A salmon has two fillets on it. Now, if you had a halibut, for example, then that would be around four fillets, so you have to fillet it a little differently. Salmon is a great fish to start if you want to start learning how to fillet, or trout, for example. A little smaller, I would say. The one that I have today is a little big. It's five kilos, and um, it's a little big today for any beginner to start filleting. Now, before we start anything with the fish, it's a good idea to prepare a space to fillet the fish. Since I have a small kitchen, I have to pick the biggest space and also to be able to show you guys as well. Um, so I have to do this on this countertop, which is not metal or granite, as you can tell. It's, um, well, it's fault, this laminate is false wood. So when you are going to fillet, it's a good idea to lay some clear film down first, just to help clean and keep everything nice and neat. If you're not using a countertop that's either metallic or granite, then you have to lay it down very carefully and you may want to put a little bit of scotch tape or anything to keep the clear film stuck down. Now if you do have either a metal or stone countertop and you have enough space, then all you need to do is sprinkle a little bit of water on the countertop, make it a little wet, and then just roll the film on that and it'll stick directly to the countertop so you don't have to worry about it moving on you. Now salmon is an easy fish to fillet. There are a few little tips that I would suggest asking the fishmonger or at the local grocery store, your fishmonger at the store to do before actually taking one home. Fish, if you don't know a lot about the anatomy of fish, fish have scales or the majority of them have scales and especially with salmon, you need to descale them. Now you can either do this at home, which is extremely messy, or you can ask them to do this at the fishmonger or at the store for you. And I would highly suggest you asking them to do it unless you wanna clean up a million little scales all over your kitchen. Not to mention all the scales that go down the sink and then it may clog up your drain, etc., etc. I'm gonna be using a chef's knife. You can use a fillet knife if you want. Um, you can still fillet with a chef's knife since it's a utility knife, but if you do want to, or if you do have a bigger fish, then I would suggest using a bigger knife as an eight inch chef knife for the fish that I have today is kind of pushing it a little bit. And then I would also suggest a pair of tweezers of some sort. Now you can buy some fish tweezers. They only cost a few euros, um, but this is to take out all the pin bones, which I'll show you a little later unless you don't care about having pin bones in your fish. Now to start filleting, I like to work from the head down the first cut, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So it's a good idea to leave the pectoral fins on um, the fishmonger. She cut this one off by accident today, so I'll show you how to do that. But you do want to take the dorsal fin off. You want to cut this off first. Now to cut the dorsal fin off, you can use some scissors if the fish is this big, it'll help a little bit. Now to cut the first fillet, we're going to start behind the gills here and behind the pectoral fin that's cut off. And we're gonna cut all the way down to here. So we want to first make the incision. Down to the bone. You're gonna cut around, yes cut behind the gills. Now, once you get to the spine right here, once the tip of the knife gets to the spine, you're going to twist it. Now, once you twist it, you wanna put lateral pressure on the blade and we're going to work down, yes? Like I said, this knife is a little small 
of being an 8 inch knife for such a big fish. And you're just going to keep pushing, keep wiggling back and forth and you want to go around the rib cage. So you get a nice fillet such as this. And once the first fillet is off, I'm going to flip the fish over on the other side. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side starting at the head. I'm going to take a hold of the pectoral fin such as this. You're going to cut around it, cut around the gills to the back end of the head. Yes? You're going to turn the knife, twist hard, and I'm going to start rocking the knife back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. You want to put a little bit of pressure on the blade so you don't lose any of the meat and you just keep working and working and working till you get down to the end of the tail. And if it's still connected because it's such a big fish, voila. Very easy. Now I'm going to show you how to clean this up. Like everything you want to take as much meat that you can get off of the bone. So this is a finite skill. It does take practice and the more you do it the better you get. Now one interesting thing is that we don't use a salmon belly. Um, but when I was in Washington State and when I was working at the casino, the Native Americans there, the local tribes, they actually cook the salmon bellies as a delicacy. So they specifically cut the salmon bellies out, or it's a bit of a different cut, and they put them on iron wood skewers. They actually had like 100 year old iron wood skewers, and then they grill them. And it's a delicacy. I had it. It's pretty good, but it's just a different way of using the fish, but they don't let anything go to waste. So now a few little things I want to point out. This is the salmon belly. Yeah, now we want to clean this off just by taking your knife and slowly slicing away at this until you get, get rid of it. This little piece here, just cut all this off and of course the fin. Now I would definitely recommend getting a bigger cutting board than the one that I have. The reason why I don't have a bigger one is because of the lack of space. But I think I'm going to get one anyway because uh, cutting fish like this is a little ridiculous on such a teeny cutting board. Now along the top here as well you want to clean all this white bit off. Just want to slice this top piece back, all this fat from the top of the fish from where the dorsal fin was. Now, once more or less, you have the whole fillet trimmed and cleaned. I'm going to show you how to portion it. Now, you can square off these ends if you want. If you don't, if it doesn't matter to you, then leave it. The first fillet I want to get will be about this much. I would also suggest that if you have a scale, that you weigh each one if that's important to you or you can do it by eye. These are going to be about 200 each, 200 grams a piece, which is about right for one person. Nice thick fillets. Now one thing I want to show you guys before I cut all this up, it depends, this is your preference on leaving the pin bones in or out. The pin bones will be along the top here, yes, along this section right here and you can easily tell by taking your knife and if you can hear that they'll come out on their own basically you can see them you can take your little tweezers and pull them out just like so and this saves you know anybody choking on any bones later on or anything like this now when you work your way down to the tail, since the salmon is starting to get thinner, you want to make the cuts a little bigger, just a little bit, because they're not as thick.
and then I'm gonna show you guys real quick on how to take the skin off. Now, to fillet the whole f uh, side of salmon is pretty easy. This is the same method. I'm not going to do that because I like the skin on my fish. But to show you guys a quick method on doing it, you always start at the tail section, always, yes? And what you do is you make a little incision in the tail down to the skin. You do not cut all the way. So literally just down to the skin. Once you get down to the skin, I'm going to use the more of the tip of my knife. You're going to twist the knife at an angle. You're going to put a lot of pressure down on the cutting board and you're just going to start moving the knife back and forth and you're pulling with the skin as well. Again, back and forth, little strokes and what this is doing is you're taking the skin off. Now, it's the same method if you want to deep skin the entire fillet. So I'll finish doing this piece to show you guys. It's very important to keep a tension on the skin back here with this hand while you're pushing the knife, cutting back and forth. The bigger the fillet, the bigger the knife you're gonna need. Just keep pulling, 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 and voila. There you have, the skin is off the fillet. Now the other thing is you can, if you want, cut off any of this silver bit, if you want, or when you go to cook it, just remember to take off all of this brown or dark meat, since this is all the blood and um, it's not very good for you. Voila. All right, now to give you guys a few tips on the different types of salmon, I'm from the Northwest, so we have multiple types of salmon and it's one of the most popular fish. We have sockeye, chinook, coho, and several others as well. King is obviously the biggest. Um, they can get up to well over 40 pounds, more or less, so well over 20 kilos. This one's five kilos. Imagine having a 20 kilo salmon. Now in Europe, we don't get Northwest salmon. We can't get King salmon, but what we do get is North Atlantic salmon. Now Atlantic salmon typically comes from in Spain, Norway, and you would think that, oh, it's wild caught salmon. No, it isn't. It's actually farm raised fish. Now in Norway, what they do is they have these massive pins that they have in the fjords and they raise the fish in these pens. The problem is with farm raised fish or farm raised salmon in general is that there's several big differences between the two. One, if you actually look at the fat content or the amount of fat between the layers of muscle tissue, it's more. So this is an easy way or a telltale sign whether it's farm raised or wild. The other thing is the colorant that they use. So with wild salmon, they have a natural pink tint. This is from what they eat. This is from their diet. Farm raised fish on the other hand do not naturally have this nice pink color to them. Instead, they dye the food that, or the pellets that they feed the fish and then that in turn dyes the meat. So in essence, you're eating food coloring and it's not the healthiest for you. Salmon is still my favorite type of fish, especially for sushi or anything like this. I would have to say tuna is my second, but um, it is a good idea or it is good to know just the differences of what you eat in general, especially when it comes to meats and fish, considering all the things that they put in the food. Now, the other thing guys is I have a little easy restaurant type setup to wrap all these. So I have my big roll of film. I have my cutting board here that's not gonna move and you need to put something behind the roll of film so it doesn't like roll away. I put the salmon on one side and then the finished products after they wrap on another. So it goes super quick. You're just gonna put one here, one little piece of salmon, wrap it, take a knife, cut the film, fold the sides and you're done. Next. So guys, obviously you can save a lot of money when you buy a whole fish and prepping it yourself at home instead of buying it already pre-portioned, pre-cut. 
Um, I got about 13 slices or 13 portions out of this five kilo salmon. So it was a very good fish. And if you get, say, another type of fish, a white fish, a halibut, for example, then you can also use the bones for a nice stock as well. So in any case, if you are interested in learning on more methods on how to cook, or if you got more information out of this video as well, then be sure to follow my YouTube channel, subscribe down to below, like the video, and stay tuned for when my cooking culinary course comes out, as I have many more helpful tips and tricks in my cooking course that many other people either don't explain or they just don't know and I try to do my best since I have this small little kitchen here but I think you guys will enjoy it quite a bit. So in any case guys I'll see you again very soon. Take care.